sound of not just any regular Toyota. That's the sound of a Toyota Supra. In fact, a 2021 Supra. And I'll have to thank my friend Gord over at uh, Georgetown Toyota for letting me drive this wonderful piece of machinery. My God! And I kind of already drove it in a way. In case you don't know, Toyota and BMW, two fantastic manufacturers, actually got together and made this thing. In fact, its sister car, or brother car, or however you want to look at it, is the Z4. The BMW Z4 and the Toyota Supra are essentially the same vehicle. And I'm sure there's lots of differences that we could talk about from Toyota and BMW and so on and so forth. One major difference with the Toyota is that you don't get the convertible. The other time I was driving, I was driving the uh, Z4 and the top went down. That, that was its party trick. So, what's the party trick on the Toyota Supra? I just gotta say, look at the thing. That's its party trick. It's gotta be one of the sexiest coupes on the market right now. I, I think it's gorgeous, and the inside is very, very much in keeping with BMW as well, and also the exterior. It's got a muscular exterior, it's got a muscular interior, and it really makes for a, a very uh, caressed seating position. You can't be too big and enjoy this car. That is definitely the case. I fit in it pretty snugly. This is the first car in a while that I would say has made my um, my C7 Corvette feel actually big and roomy. This particular car, the Supra, it definitely, uh, definitely is a little bit tight, but boy oh boy, once you get inside this car, you really get a feel for it immediately and you understand it's a serious driving car. We definitely, definitely have all the bells and whistles that we, we would want from a BMW. We got Toyota stuff as well, but my lord, everything about this car is just so, so driver focused, so driver oriented. The brakes feel fantastic. I have it in sport mode right now. It sounds amazing, and I'm really enjoying this piece of road. And I gotta say, I haven't touched the paddle shifters yet, but in sport mode, I'm really surprised how once I get on it, the eight speed automatic, even slowing down how quickly it makes the adjustment. I haven't touched the paddles yet. That's very, very, very impressed with that, I have to say. And the dashboard on this car, the dash, the, the center console, everything, it's reminiscent of the Z4. You can tell there are bits and pieces, especially on, on the um, heating and ventilation controls. They're clearly, you know, right out of the BMW. But everything else is, is quite a bit different, actually. Um, and when you look at the, the center bezel, it's got this great depiction. You got this sort of three-quarter bezel and, and then you have this wonderful dial that's in red and it, as, as you kind of heat up the car and get higher in the revs it gets a little bit hotter as well and um, I just happen to find a, a twisty piece of road and boy oh boy this is a really really well dialed in car uh, the one thing I'll say in comparison to the C7 and I'll, I'll show a shot of the two side by side uh, because they are very similar actually when you look at them um, the vet and the one that I'm driving is a, is a Stingray. Uh, it doesn't have any my magnetic ride or anything like that. It's it's just dialed in, kind of like as a Stingray, the way a Stingray should be dialed in. And this car feels nothing like the VAT. It is far, I'd like to say, more buttoned down to the road. The C7 does have a little bit of yaw in it, I would say. Um, it, it really does yaw quite a lot. It's definitely a grand touring car. This is not a grand touring car. This is a sports car, and and this is obviously a sports car based on the back. <laughs> uh, the uh, it does have a hatch. It's not hatchback sort of uh, you know equipped with the uh, the amount of space that you have back there. Uh, but you could get a set a set of golf clubs. I think is doable. Not a, not a huge set. Not a tour set. That's for sure. But nonetheless, you wouldn't buy this to go golfing. You buy this because you might actually want to take it on a track and uh, definitely would be a track car, but for something focused to have in the garage, wow, the Supra is just, well, it's super. It's definitely super, and I could definitely get used to driving this thing on a daily basis. Just tossing it around corners is just so much fun. Let's get on it. Very, 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 very nice. Very nice. If you have a chance, you should talk to an expert over at Georgetown Toyota. If you really, if you are looking at an MZ4, I'm going 
going to run out of gas soon. <laughs> if you are looking at a Z4, uh, if you're looking at uh, perhaps Boxster Cayman, uh, you know, we're definitely all over the map on pricing with all of those vehicles. But at the same time, I would say if you find those vehicles a little bit too pricey for the money, you got to take a look at a Supra because everything that you get in this vehicle is so driver focused and driver oriented with this lovely dash and, and the everything, the carbon fiber, um, the lovely, lovely steering wheel, really great steering wheel feel. Uh, as well. I mean, just, just so much great stuff in here. And the attention to do detail is fantastic. Toyota's always had great fit and finish, but you add to that the kind of like, kind of more exquisite stuff from BMW. I think it's it's definitely a, a, a little bit, it's a little bit more than what you would expect from a Toyota. I, I didn't expect getting in this car. I expected something a little bit more stripped down and I hadn't been inside the Supra. I've only seen some pictures of the 2020, seen them at my client stores, but never really hopped in and, and took one for a drive. And this is definitely a car that anyone should definitely take for a drive because, wow, just the drive is... And P.S., the drive is fun even at 60 kilometers per hour. You don't have to be doing a million miles. This isn't a 700 horsepower car as well. It's just so usable across the range uh, of, of your driving. And I'm just kind of, I haven't left Georgetown yet, and I'm still enjoying this car. The one downside of cars, people ask me, you know, what was it like driving the Ferrari? It's a lot. It, it, it always is a lot because they have so much horsepower and so much drive and so much performance that literally you get out of those things and you, well, when I got out of the Ferrari and got into my, my, my Corvette, my Corvette felt like a 90s Cadillac. It's just so much going on, whereas this is like a, a, the best of both worlds. And um, yeah, and with that, you want to get to know a little bit more about the car or probably take a look at a different Toyota. You should definitely come and check out Georgetown Toyota. A great bunch of people here, been clients of mine for a long time, and uh, anybody here could be uh, uh, far more an expert on the Toyota Supra than I. But uh, I know what I like. I like cars, I like driving, and I especially like sports cars. And wow, this Supra, definitely a, sort, a sports car you can uh, you can easily grow to love. And my, I, I just gotta say again, what, what a, great looking car it is. It's just so muscular, it's so sexy. It sounds that way too. I mean, come on. Really? Un I want one. <laughs> Would I get the BMW or the Toyota? I sold BMWs. It's a tough one. You know, I, I kind of I kind of wish the BMW just had the Toyota looks. So I'd probably end up with the Toyota because it looks amazing. Yeah. Decisions, decisions. <laughs> oh boy. This is just, just too nice. Come together.